Hello, good evening, Manisha and Vidika. Good evening, sir. I hope I'm audible to both of you. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, all right. In the in the last class, we were discussing about the valuation of the goodwill. So we'll continue our class from that point onwards. So in the last session, before ending the session, we had discussed the average profit method of finding the value of the goodwill of, of a firm. Now we have, uh, we will do a few more questions based on the average profit method only. And after that, we'll talk about the weighted average method. So before moving to the valuation of goodwill, we talked about the meaning of the goodwill and the different types of goodwill. So if we need to define goodwill, goodwill can be defined as the name good name or reputation of a firm of a business in the market, right? And there are two types of goodwill from the accounting point of view. One is the self-generated and the, then there is purchase goodwill. Accounting, accounting treatment for both the type of goodwill will be different. But right now we are not discussing the accounting treatment of the goodwill. We'll be just focused upon the valuation of the goodwill. So if we are talking about the valuation of the goodwill, that simply means that we are currently discussing self-generated goodwill, right? Because purchase goodwill is never calculated. Purchase goodwill is something that you have bought by paying consideration. You don't have to do any uh, calculation. You don't have to apply any formula to find out the, uh, to determine the value of the goodwill. So generally, when, uh, if we if we are calculating, if we are applying formula and determining the value of the goodwill, that means that we are talking about the self-generated goodwill, not the purchase goodwill. So the uh, entire topic, this topic that we are currently discussing is completely based on the self-generated goodwill. Okay, after that, we talked about the different methods by which goodwill can be valued. So we have uh, four methods by which goodwill can be calculated. Uh, first, we, we, we had discussed in the last class, which is average profit method. And as uh, I have told you in the last session as well, that all this topic is completely formula based. So you will have to learn and re remember the formulas uh, to calculate the goodwill by different methods. All right. And obviously the formula is not that difficult, but collectively, since you will have to remember uh, four different formulas, for uh, um, for the valuation of the goodwill, it sometimes get more complicated or difficult for the student to remember all the formula. All right. So, anyways, uh, we had discussed average profit method, which is pretty simple. In this method, we need to uh, find out first of all the average profit and then multiply it with the number of year purchases. Number of year purchases is something which you uh, won't be required to calculate. This will always be there in the question. We don't have to do any specific calculation for finding out the number of your purchase. But yeah, uh, in most of the question, average profit will not be there directly. For that purpose, you will have to do certain calculation to reach, to, to, uh, arise, at the, uh, to arrive at the average profit. And then you will calculate uh, the value of the goodwill by multiplying the number of your purchase. On this method, we did few questions. I, I guess we did three questions based on the average profit method, which I'm sure you understood well. Now we'll move to the next topic. Next, in fact, next question. But before that, we need to discuss one very important thing, which is the normal one. All right. So see, uh, what is what is normal profit? Normal profit. So why normal profit is important? First of all, let us know that. Why, why normal profit or the calculation of normal profit is important? See, in the upcoming question, let me show you in fact. If you, if you read question number 53, you will notice something. It says Divya purchased Jyoti's business with effects from 1st of April 2020. Profit shown by Jyoti business for the last three financial year were. For the year 2017-18, it was rupees 1 lakh, including the abnormal gain of 12,500. Then in the year 2018-19, profit was 125. Uh, after charging abnormal loss. Then in the next year, profit was excluding 12,500 as insurance premium. So all these information given in the bracket along with the amount of profit uh, for all the years, what are, what are these things and how these things will be used for the during the calculation of the goodwill? We need to understand this. 
see these information given uh, which is given in the bracket is given for the purpose of finding out the normal value normal value of the profit on in all the upcoming question we will be calculating the normal profit because see average profit is always calculated on the basis of the normal profit unless and until you have the normal profit you won't be able to find out the average profit average profit is always determined on the basis of the normal profit now so what do you mean by the normal profit the normal profit for a firm for a particular year is calculated by applying this simple formula let me show you. <clears throat> see what i'm telling you i'm i'm telling you that in order to find out the average profit of the firm let's suppose we need to find out the average profit of the last 3 years so we will be we will need Three years, which kind of profit? We will need three years normal profit to find out the average profit. You need three years normal profit, and then you will divide this by three. Then only you will we you will you will get the average profit of the last three years. Got it? Now the thing is that in some question, normal profit is not given directly in the question. So for that purpose, you will have to do certain calculation. Unless and until you find out the normal profit, you won't be able to determine the correct average profit, right? So we are discussing all these things to determine the normal profit. How uh, how can we determine normal profit? We'll learn that, and then we'll learn how can we calculate correct average profit. All right. So see what is normal profit. In order to find out the normal profit of a firm. in order to find out the normal profit of a firm what do we do whatever the profit given let's suppose uh, we are talking about year 2021 22 so to find out the normal profit of the firm for this particular year what do we require we'll require first of all normal profit that firm have managed to generate during the year 2000 Right. First of all, we'll require the profit that firm have managed to earn during the year two thousand twenty-one, twenty-two. Right. We'll take the amount of profit. Now, see. Let's suppose the amount of profit for this firm is six lakhs. All right. Now, if you understand the concept of profit, you must remember that profit contains all. Kind of income, like uh, if firm have earned any income by way of, uh, like if if firm have earned income by way of rent, this may also be included in the profit. If firm have earned any income by way of sale, this will be there in the amount of the profit as well. If firm have earned uh, something by way of commission, all right. And like any anything by way of donation, donation will also be there. And if if firm have earned anything on account of sale of asset, sale of asset, all these things form part of the profit. Do you understand that all these things? Like if firm have sold some goods, so revenue generated on that uh, on on the value of the goods sold will form part of the profit. as well as rent that firm have received on certain asset will also be included in the profit commission will be included donation and sales of the asset will also be profit profit earned on sale of asset will also be included in the profit right but there are certain profit which are considered as considered as abnormal from the uh, from the from the business point of view ritu can wish you kindly wait for 2 uh, minute I'll, i'll give you i'll just reconnect i'm i'm keeping on myself on mute i there is a important call coming i have to take that call kindly wait for two minutes
Yeah. All right. So let's let's continue. So uh, what I was telling you that uh, if a firm firm declares its profit for a particular year, that profit contains all the income, like a firm, whatever the firm have generated on account of sale, that must have been inclu included in order to determine the value of the profit for the firm. Rent must be, uh, must have also taken into consideration, commission uh, is also added, donation is added, sales of the S in income on by way of the sale of asset will, will also be included at the time of calculation of the profit. But there are certain incomes which are taken into account by calculating profit of the firm, but those income are not the regular income or the are considered as the main uh, income from the operation uh, operating activities of the firm. You understand that profit contains all the income, whether the income generated from the operating activity, that means op main operations of the business, and profit also contains items or income that are not uh, from the regular source of the uh, income for the business or income of the business. Right. So thing is that in order to find out the normal profit of the firm, what we need to do, we need to subtract certain incomes which has been earlier added in the profit, but those incomes should not be added because those are not from the regular source of the business. Those are considered as the abnormal gains. Like the example that I have given you, profit is six lakh, right? But in this profit, the value of the sales, the, the income that we have generated on account of sales, this is obviously an operational income. This is our regular income. But all other income, income generated uh, by way of rent is not our regular income. This is abnormal gain. Commission is an abnormal gain. Donation is abnormal gain. Say income on sale of asset is an abnormal gain. So all these income is obviously it is an income for the business. But if we want to find out the normal profit of the business, that means we will take into consideration only such uh, incomes which are from the regular source of the operation of the business. So uh, income by way of rent cannot be received by way of regular income. Commission is not the regular income of the business. Donation is not the regular income of the business. So in order to find out the normal profit, we will just consider the normal incomes of the business and for that purpose what do we do to find out the correct amount of normal profit or in fact to find out the normal profit what do we do we'll subtract all the abnormal gains that must have been earlier added by calculating the profit of the firm of this particular year right so whatever the incomes uh, which are considered as abnormal income or abnormal gain which has been earlier added to determine the profit for this particular year, we will have to subtract that. Let's suppose abnormal gains collectively stands at 1,50,000. So we will be subtracting that to find out the normal profit of the business. What, so what do you mean by normal profit? By normal profit, I mean the profit that firm generally earn from the regular source of operation, regular operations of the business. And to determine the normal profit, we will have to subtract all abnormal incomes or abnormal gains, which comes from the non-regular source or non-operating activity for the business, right? And similarly, there are certain expenses that we might have subtracted earlier. While calculating profit, all the expenses has to be subtracted. Do you understand that? In order to determine the correct profit of the firm, in order to determine the profit of the firm, what do we do? We subtract all the expenses, right? And after subtracting all the expenses, we find out the net profit of the firm. So to, to arrive at the at this profit, we must have subtracted all the expenses. But expenses are also classified into two categories. Operating expenses. And then there are non-operating expenses. So what do you mean by operating, non-operating? Operating active expenses basically means expenses which are which are incurred on regular activities of the business. Or expenses which are directly connected with the regular operations of the business are considered as the operating expenses. And those expenses are considered as the normal expenses of the business. Right. But there are certain expenses which are not uh, connected with the regular operation of the business 
and such expenses are considered as the abnormal expenses. Let me show you. Uh, abnormal expenses may include these kind of expenses. Firm have suffered a loss by way of fire. Then uh, there is a uh, theft took place and on account of the theft uh, business, uh, there is a loss of, let's suppose, uh, two lakh. So this, this has also, we, we have also subtracted this while calculating the profit of the firm. Similarly, we have sold an asset on, on which we have suffered a loss, right? Then uh, some mishappening arises to an employee on account of that we had to pay compensation to that employee. Some, because of some natural disaster, we suffered some losses. So all these losses that company is bearing or facing is not considered, uh, these, these losses cannot be considered as part of the normal operation of the business. All these expenses or all these losses that firm is, firm is suffering with is considered as the abnormal losses or expenses. Do you understand that? And because all these expenses are abnormal or all these losses are abnormal losses, that we had, we, we must have uh, subtracted at the time of calculation of the profit. And because these are normal losses, these are not part of the regular operations of the firm. So what do we do in order to find out the correct amount or the normal amount of profit, what, whichever abnormal expense has been earlier subtracted has to be added back. All abnormal losses that has been subtracted earlier in order to arrive at the profit, we will, what, what do we do? We'll add the abnormal losses. Let's suppose all abnormal losses earlier subtracted to find out the profit was, uh, let's suppose 80,000. What do we do? We add the abnormal losses that has been subtracted earlier. And by doing this, we will finally reach the amount of normal profit. This will be the normal profit. So precisely speaking, if I summarize everything, we can say that in order to find out the normal profit of the firm, what do we do? We simply subtract the abnormal gains and add abnormal losses into the amount of profit given in the question. So whatever the profit given in the question, you will have to subtract out of that. You will have to subtract abnormal gains that you must have added earlier. And you will have to add back abnormal losses that you must have subtracted earlier. Right? And finally, by doing this, you will get the normal profit of the firm. And this has to be done for every year, for, for all the years for which you, you need to calculate the normal profit. Like if you need to calculate the normal profit for the year 2020-21, you will have to apply the same formula. For, the, for all other previous years or the upcoming year, you will have to apply the same formula to determine the normal profit. I hope this explanation is clear, Ritika and Vinisha. Let me know if, if you are having any difficulty understanding anything. It's clear. It's clear. It's clear. Okay. All right. So we can uh, now write all this thing down. All you need to do, uh, put the heading on your notebook, calculation of, of the normal profit. Basic formula to calculate the normal profit will be net profit given in the question minus abnormal income plus abnormal losses. Now, uh, the question arises, what are the items generally considered as the abnormal incomes? So these are few examples of the items which are considered as the abnormal income. This is not the exclusive list of those items which are considered as abnormal income. These are just inclusive. There are certain other items as well which are considered as abnormal income which had to be subtracted, right? And similarly, we have few abnormal losses. I have taken few uh, abnormal losses uh, as an example. There could be other, other losses as well which are treated as abnormal losses. So depending upon the question, we'll do the treatment. For now, we have uh, taken just five examples just to illustrate what are the abnormal losses. So loss by fire, loss by theft, loss on sale of asset. These are not normal losses of the business that for, that, that a business incur on a, on a day to day basis. These are a few abnormal expenses or losses that firm suffers with. All right. So Ritika and Vinisha, I want you to note this down. Uh, both these slides, uh, please note everything and let me know once you are done so that we can quickly start with the question.
Again, switch is slide. Please note this as well. Uh, we will we'll continue with the question. Uh, we will first of all discuss question number 53, which says Divya purchased Jyoti's business. <clears throat> okay, so Divya purchased Jyoti's business with effect from 1st of April 2020. Profit shown by Jyoti business for the last three financial years were. For the year 2017, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, profit for the last three years is given as 1 lakh 125 and 1 lakh 125. But if you'll notice for the year 2017, 18, some additional information is given uh, in, in the bracket. It says this is the profit earned by the firm in the 2017, 18 was 1 lakh, including the abnormal gain of 12,500, uh, right? And similarly, for the year 2018, 19, Profit earned by the firm was 1,25,000, but this is after charging a normal loss of 25,000. And similarly, for the year 2019-20, 1,12,500 was the profit, but it, it excludes 12,500 as an insurance premium on firm's property now to be insured. Question says that we need to calculate the firm's goodwill on the basis of two years purchase of the average profit of the last three years. So we need to calculate our average profit of the last three years and calculate the value of the goodwill based on two year purchase. So number of your purchase in this question is two years. Average profit has to uh, be calculated, right? We will have to calculate average profit, but for that purpose, we will have to first of all determine the correct profit for every year. We will have to find out the normal profit for every year for the year 2017, 18, 18, 19, and 19, 20. All right. So uh, let me show you how we will solve this question. This is, uh, though it's easy, I think you can try this question on your own as well, but still I'll be solving this question for you and then I'll give you the other question to try. So let me show you how you can solve this question number 43. So first of all, to find out the value of the goodwill, we'll apply the formula, goodwill of the formula. Goodwill of the firm equals to average profit of the firm into number of years purchased. Right now, to find out the average profit, we'll apply this formula. Total profit of three years, right? We need to find out the average profit of the last three years, no? So three years average profit. So total profit of three years divided will divide that by three years. Total impact. Just a second. We should in fact write down total normal profit of the last year, three years, and then we'll divide this by three years. 
and then we'll multiply with the number of year purchase. Number of years purchase. So this is our main working, but to find out the normal profit of the firm, we'll have to prepare an extra working note here. Working note, and in the working note, we'll calculate the normal profit of the firm. First of all, so for the year 2000, we'll start with year 2017-18, then 2018-19, and 2019-20. Net profit is given, and we will have we will be finding the normal profit for each year. Alright, so first of all, what was the normal profit for the year 2017-18? It was rupees 1 lakh, right? This is already given in the course. This is the net profit of the year 2017-18. And similarly, for the next year, it was 1 lakh 25,000. 1 lakh 25,000. And for the next year, it was 1 lakh 12,500. Okay, now for the year 2017-18, it says that amount of profit has been calculated by, by including an abnormal gain of 12,500. And since it is an abnormal gain, how do we treat abnormal gains? So in order to find out the normal profit, to find out the normal profit, what do we do? We will be subtracting, we will subtract it, right? We will subtract 12,500 out of this. So less 12,500 and by subtracting 12,500, how much we'll get? We'll get the, uh, the normal profit for the year 2017-18 as 87,500, if I'm not wrong. Right? Is this correct? Yes, sir. All right. Now, for the next year, similarly, we'll calculate the normal profit of the next year as well. But in the next year, we have some abnormal losses abnormal loss has been subtracted to rectify the mistake what we do we'll add that abnormal expense so it says uh, for the year 2018-19 profit was 1 lakh 25000 uh, after charging the abnormal loss so to find out the correct normal profit what we'll do we'll add 25000 so 25000 and by adding this, we'll get the normal profit, one lakh fifty thousand. Okay. Next year, in the next year, 2019-20, profit has been calculated one lakh twelve thousand five hundred, but it excludes twelve thousand five hundred as of insurance premium of property. And listen to me very carefully. Insurance premium of property is an is a normal expense. It must be subtracted. It is not, it is neither an abnormal loss nor an abnormal gain. Expenditure on uh, expenditure by way of insurance premium is a normal expense. And normal expense is to be subtracted. Right? It is to be it is to be subtracted. So what we did, we we forgot to subtract the insurance premium earlier. So now to find out the correct normal profit, profit what we will do, we will now subtract it. All right, we will subtract 12,500. Why we are subtracting it? This is a normal expense. This, this, this does not fall under the category of the normal gain or abnormal loss. So the after subtracting this, the profit will be 1 lakh. Right now we'll total the normal profit of the last three years. And total will be 
टू लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड प्लस एटी सेवन थाउजेंड दिस विल बी थ्री लैख थर्टी सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड Please confirm if this is right. Yes. Two lakh thirty-seven thousand five hundred should be na. Okay. Yes. Sir. So this is the normal profit of the of the firm for the last three years total normal profit. Now we'll calculate the average profit based on the normal. So we'll put this value here. Total normal profit was three lakh thirty-seven thousand five hundred. This comes from the working note. And then we'll divide this by three years, and then we'll multiply with the three-year purchase. So ultimately, we'll cancel. We can three will be cancelled out by three. So the uh, value of the goodwill will be three lakh thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Tell me if this calculation is clear to both of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so this is the right answer. Once. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Now we can move to the next question. Question number fifty-three. This was, and now we'll talk about question number fifty-four. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll just read this question for you. I want you to try this question on your own. लेट मी रीड दिस इट सेज भारत एंड भूषण देर आर टू पार्टनर्स हू वर शेयरिंग प्रॉफिट इन द रेशो ऑफ थ्री टू टू एंड देन दे हैव डिसाइडेड टू एडमिट अ न्यू पार्टनर नेमिंग मनु एज अ पार्टनर फ्रॉम फर्स्ट ऑफ अप्रैल टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी एंड टर्म ऑफ एडमिशन फॉर द न्यू पार्टनर इज गिवन इन द्वेश्चन इट सेज मनु विल बी गिवन टू फिफ्थ शेयर ऑफ दी प्रॉफिट सी ऑल दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन इज नॉट रेलिवेंट फॉर अस फॉर दी पर्पज ऑफ द वैल्यूशन ऑफ द टोटल who is getting admitted how much share he has been given this is not important for the valuation of the goodwill okay next thing in the in the point number 2 it says goodwill of the firm will be valued at 2 years purchase of 3 years normal average profit of the firm now our question start from this point only this is a uh, this is an important information the so main question is start from the second point so goodwill is to be valued at 2 years purchase and the average Profit has to be calculated based on the three years normal profit. Profit for the three years has been given, but it contains some abnormal gains and abnormal losses. You will have to adjust the profit and find out the value of the goodwill of the firm. What do you think, both of you, Vanisha and Radhika? Do you want to try this question? Do you think you will be able to do it? Yes, sir. Please, please, please try. Uh, I'm allowing you five ten minutes. I'm sure you will be able to do it within within that time. I'm keeping myself on mute. Just let me know if you are if you have any difficulty solving it.
Dancer. Both of you done? Vanisha, it's okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, please tell me the answer you are getting. Sir, I got 1,20,000 as goodwill. 1,20,000 as the value of the goodwill, na? Yes, sir. And Vanisha, you are getting the same answer? Pratika, kindly confirm. Even I'm not sure what, what will be the answer of this question. Uh, I, I just got, wanted to confirm if you are both getting the same answer, then possibly that will be right. But if there is any differences, I'll have to solve this question. Manisha, kindly confirm if you are getting the same answer. Yes, sir. 1 lakh 20,000, okay. So I guess that is the right answer for this question. Just a second, let me check. Profit. Uh, what? Okay. All right. So, uh, one lakh twenty twenty thousand is the right answer for this question. Moving to question number. 55. Okay, let me read this question for you. Uh, again, there are certain, so some irrelevant information from the valuation of the goodwill point of view. It says Bhaskar and Pillai are partners sharing profit and losses in the ratio of 3 to 2. They admit Kanika into partnership, one fourth share in the profit. Kanika brings in her uh, share of profit, so her share of goodwill in cash. Now, all this information till this point is not relevant for the valuation of the goodwill. Now question actually starts. It says goodwill for this purpose is to be calculated at two years purchase of the average normal profit of the past three years. Profit of the last three years ended at 31st of March were, so three years average, three years profit is given. For the year 2017, profit is given as 50,000 that include the profit on sale of the asset as well. Now you know the profit on sale of asset is an abnormal gain, right? So you will have to subtract it to find out the normal profit of the firm for the year 2017. Then in the year 2018, firm has suffered with a loss of 20,000. So this time in the year 2018, firm have, have a situation of loss. And that, that loss also contain an expense on account of loss by fire 30,000. So in order to arrive at a loss of 20,000, firm have actually subtracted 30,000 uh, in, in context of loss by fire, which should not be subtracted, right? Because this is an abnormal expense, abnormal loss. So to, to find out the correct normal profit of the 2018, you'll have to add this back. We'll add it. So the normal profit of the, for, for the year 2018 will be 10,000. Then in the year 2019, profit was 70,000 and that include insurance claim received 18,000. Now, insurance claim, you, you already know, insurance claim is an income, but that is an abnormal income, right? So, this has to be subtracted. And interest on investment and dividend received. Interest on investment and dividend is also not our regular income. It is also not our regular income. So, therefore, with this also need to be subtracted. Both these, both these incomes, 18 plus 8,000 are considered as an abnormal gain. We'll subtract it to arrive at the correct normal profit of the form. All right, please, please try this question as well. Pratika and Vanisha. Okay,
बंस दन वनिशा रितकल लॉर्ड है ना ओके प्लीज चल मेरी चल मेरी आंसर ये बेटिंग सर आई गेट गुडविल एस सिक्सटी सिक्स थाउजेंड हम्म या सिक्सटी सिक्स थाउजेंड इज़ द राइट आंसर वनिशा ये बेटिंग भी सेम आंसर यस आई गेट गुडविल एस सिक्सटी सिक्स थाउजेंड एंड कलुरा शेयर इज़ आउट सिक्सटी थाउजेंड फाइव Hmm, right. Okay. So the share has to be calculated in the question it says. Yeah. Okay. It it requires you to calculate the Kanika share of the bill as well. Yeah. Good. Good job. Well done. Now question number fifty six is also based on the similar concept, of which I'll be giving you as a homework. After that we have a weighted average method. You check. So instead of moving to the new new method, let's uh, solve question number fifty six. Me, we won't be able to uh, finish question number. Uh, sorry, we won't be able to start weighted average method. It will require some time because I'll have to explain at least one or two question to make it understandable for you. So we'll not be uh, discussing this topic today. We'll be discussing this in the next class. That will be on Wednesday. Okay, but uh, in the Um, since we have some time available in today's session, we'll we'll talk about question number fifty six. It says uh, Sumit purchased Amit's business on first of April two thousand nineteen. Goodwill was goodwill was decided to be valued at two years purchase of the average normal profit of the last four years. Profit for the past four years were okay. So four years profit is given for the for year two thousand sixteen profit was eighteen and for one forty five one sixty and two nine. Book of account revealed that abnormal loss of twenty thousand was debited to profit and loss account for the year two thousand third two thousand sixteen. Okay, so adjustment information for for each year is given in the uh, in these point in the point first adjustment regarding the two thousand sixteen profit is given. Then in the second adjustment it says a fixed asset was sold in the year two thousand seventeen and gain. Of twenty four twenty five thousand was credited to P and L account. Okay, so that is an abnormal gain that has been added into the into the profit of the two thousand seventeen. Then in the year ended thirty first of March two thousand eighteen, asset of the firm were not insured due to oversight. Insurance premium not paid was fifteen thousand. Now insurance premium I have already explained that insurance premium is a is a normal expense of the business. This has to be subtracted. Irrespective of the situation, so we had uh, we we uh, earlier we did not subtracted it. Now to find out the normal profit of the firm for the year two thousand eighteen eighteen, you will have to now subtract it. We are subtracting it not because this is an abnormal gain. We are subtracting it because it is an it is a normal expense of the firm, and it has not been subtracted earlier. So for that uh, reason, we will subtract it now to find out the correct normal profit. There is no adjustment regarding the year two thousand nineteen, so we we believe that two lakh profit given for the year two thousand nineteen is the is the normal profit itself. We don't have to do any calculation for the year two thousand nineteen, right? I hope this this question is clear, and I want you to try this question as well. Both the future, Vanisha and Vitika. Okay, sir. Please try.
All right, uh, Ritika, it was you. Ritika, could you please tell me the answer? So I got to like 82,500 as good. Mm -hmm. Manisha? Progress to see. Okay. Yeah, so 282,500 is the right answer. So now I guess uh, you completely and sorry. I think you got the same answer. You got the same answer, na? Yeah, good. good job. So now I believe that both of you understood the concept of the uh, valuation of the goodwill by average profit method, and I'm I'm sure that you also understood the uh, concept regarding the determination of the normal profit of the firm. Now. Uh, uh, this is it for today's session. Uh, but before ending this session, just wanted to inform you that we will be conducting test on Friday. So be prepared for that. Uh, I am, I'm, let me tell you the topic for the test. So these are the topics that we, I'll be, uh, I'll be giving you question from, uh, topics are profit and losses, interest on capital. Sorry, profit and loss appropriation account, interest on capital, formation of the capital account by both the method, fluctuating and fixed capital method, guarantee of profit, past adjustment. So there are five topics. See, if you if you uh, notice uh, these two topics, above two topics, first two topics are the uh, topics from the previous tests. So you have already you already have some idea about these topics since you have already given test based on these topics. So I have added three new topics for the next test. So next, uh, this test contains these three new topics, formation of the capital account, guarantee of profit and pass agency. All right. So these are the topics for the test that I'll be conducting on Friday. And this time your test will be of 30 marks. 